Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, the number one place for designers, artists and creators. My name is Laszlo and today I want to talk to you about packaging design. Now you might have heard about this design competition on Twitter called the 6000 Project. It is an initiative to design a Prosecco label for this Italian winery called Sfriso Winery. In a nutshell what happened is they ended up with 6000 unvented bottles of Prosecco after a big importer of theirs pulled out of a deal because of the current situation we are in globally. Now coming across with this, I love the story, I really like what these guys are about, so I decided to get on board and submit a design for this label. Oh yeah, and they said they are fine with me making this video as long as I state that Prosecco is not champagne. Prosecco is Prosecco. What can make or break this project is the amount of pre-orders these guys would be able to sell within the next couple weeks. So if you are able to go check them out, I'll leave some links under this video. Please buy a case or two, something to celebrate New Year's Eve with. Which leads me to the concept I came up with for my design. Addio 2020. I wanted to create a word mark out of this Italian phrase. Now, addio can be translated to so long, see you later, see you never, basically. It's a way of saying goodbye to someone you are not expecting to see ever again. Which I think what we will all say about this roller coaster of a year once we are at the end of it. In terms of style, I knew I wanted to create something very subtle and minimal. I think a lot of label designs out there are all about creating this contrast between the dark bottle and the light label. So designers oftentimes try to make it quite shouty and busy. You know, to create an impression, so you pick it up in the shops. I wanted to take this somewhere else though. I wanted to not fight the darkness, but embrace it, you know. Make it part of the universal aesthetic of the packaging. As if the label and the bottle are one and the same. Generally speaking, I like to spend a bit more time on my sketches and I don't jump into the computer until I have a clear idea on paper. But this time I broke my own rule. The main reason for this was that I felt like the look and feel of my design will be heavily dependent on the font or fonts that I will use. So I wanted to test some out as soon as possible in Illustrator to see what could work in practice. Now first I typed the phrase out with a font I liked, then I started playing around by deconstructing the letters. What I do here is basically look for connections, what shape relates to what, you know. Word marks and logo ties oftentimes based on this idea of what is the simplest way to communicate the phrase they are showing. If you look hard enough, you will find the same shapes reoccurring in letters and numbers a lot. So what I like to do is take some of these, what I call the duplicates, and take them away. Just to give you a famous example of what I mean, think of the Victorian Albert Museum in London. You don't have a fully typed out capital A in the logo, but you still kind of see it. You know it's you know it's supposed to be a capital A because of the placement of this ampersand suggests some of the missing parts of the capital A. That's the kind of thing I am always trying to do with the type. A common thing to do is relate the letter O to zeros, which is an idea I toyed around with, but then I thought it would be much more interesting to relate my, my two D's in addio with the curvy upper part of the number 2's, which I will have in 2020. Now after some trials and errors, I have decided to not take out any main parts of any characters. What I did instead is I made this strong connection between the 2 and the letter D. I thought by making them related, I would get a nice flow between the two composing parts of my design, the word and the date. As you can see, I have taken apart some of my characters. I didn't really like this overly curvy shape of the number 2, so I brought in some other fonts. Now, when I got to this stage with my design, I have basically decided that this is it. The seed of the idea is planted. I just need to nurture it to see it grow. What I had to do is, you know, trim it, play around it and polish it until it's looking its best. I have changed the bottom parts of the number 2's again. The first one was a bit too curvy, too sort of mustache-like. And the second, on the other hand, that was a bit too sleek, too strict. So I went with a third version, which was somewhere in between these two directions. I have also brought in a few little extra graphic elements, a dot on the eye, as well as this little overlapping bit on the two. I had this initial idea that the word mark should also resemble a bunch of grapes, or grapevine. 
which is a very unruly, unpredictable looking plant with the fruit and the leaves overlapping and growing in all possible directions. Eventually I thought this comparison would end up in a design that is a bit too much, a bit too messy, so I didn't push it very hard, but I left some little nods like this in the composition, referencing this root. I also wanted to bring in some abstract supporting elements. The idea was to draw out a circular piece of design that would resemble both fireworks as well as the fizzy prosecco popping out of the bottles. If you want to know how I have done this in Illustrator, I basically drew out a circle shape, then changed the line to a dashed line in the stroke settings, then pumped up the line weight. I wanted these elements to be in the background, not taking anything away from the word mark, so I used a few very heavy outlines to separate everything. After some playing around, I realized that this background element doesn't really work for me. It's too angular and didn't give the right impression. It looked a little like a dartboard, or you know those old school circus posters with the circular rays in the background? It just wasn't the exact look and feel that I was going for. I have tried to save this composition by curving out the edges, but that didn't work too well either, so I decided to redraw this element in a different way. This time I made it out of exclamation marks. Mirror, rotate, duplicate a couple of times and voila! You got a circular design. This immediately felt like a more appropriate background for my design. At this point I was happy with the basic design work, so I jumped over to Photoshop to mock this up. First I have downloaded a champagne bottle mock-up, then I have pasted in my word mark. Now just because the shape of the design is basically done, that doesn't mean that the work is done. There are a lot of other aspects I had to start thinking about at this point, like the final color scheme, the sizes and ratios of different elements, that kind of stuff. I also started to play with embossing settings, just to see how that would look, and that made such an impact almost immediately as I started to play around with it. I know I would definitely include a bit of this in the final version. Now here you can see I have tried throwing a bunch of different colors to this thing, nothing really stuck out to me to be honest. In fact, I felt like the simplest I went, the better the design looked. Initially I was thinking of a golden, you know, expensive looking color, something subtle which is kind of relates to this idea of a cheeky Prosecco. You know, Prosecco and Champagne are very elegant, civilized things, but there is an element of playfulness to them as well, which I thought might be nice to represent with a bit of color, but eventually I dropped this idea. Sometimes color and composition end up fighting each other, so you gotta give it to one side or the other. I went with composition and kept this modest grey color scheme. Silver is still a precious shade anyway, isn't it? I went back to Illustrator to finalize the design. I use Illustrator for this kind of work because of the scalable vector capabilities. I don't want to worry about pixels and that kind of stuff in early stages of my design. Using Illustrator allows you to focus on the craft first, and once you are done with that, what I call the heavy lifting of the design work, then you can move on to the actual issues that come with packaging, such as formatting, sizing up everything and so on. Here I have made an actual label which would surround my design. I have made sure that it is the exact size that we would need and that we are in CMYK mode. So the print quality would come out nice. You know, I usually wouldn't recommend gradients for print, but I thought since it's going to be a relatively small piece, a design that is only 90 by 95 millimeters, I thought why not? I just want to quickly show the exact settings I have used to get my final embossing, in case you are interested how I did that. So I bring in the artwork to Photoshop, double click on the layer settings, then tick level and embossing. Here I put the technique to chisel hard and pumped up the depth and the size of it. Now there are a number of other settings you might want to have a look at here. If you want to, you can make the effect a bit softer on the edges, or bring in some texture on top that can look nice as well, depending on what you're working on but I have decided to leave it as clean as I can. I really like this natural metallic look. It's a bit like a precious piece of jewelry, isn't it? It also reminds me of the title treatments for the Harry Potter and the Fantastic Beats movies, right? As a final step, I brought this layer back to Illustrator, but I traced it so it becomes a vector. 
Also, if you are more comfortable with Photoshop, you can just stay there and finalize everything in, in a Photoshop file. And there we have it, it's all done. The Swizzle guys have provided this picture of the label as bottle, so instead of my previous mock-up, I ended up using this image to make my own makeshift mock-up, basically. It's simple and clean, no nonsense. That's what Prozacco is to me. By the way, there is still a little time to apply for this competition. You can submit a design by the 19th of this month. So if you feel inspired and you have a bit of time on your hand this coming week, feel free to give it a go. I hope you enjoyed this process video. Follow our channel if you are interested in digital design projects. We touch on graphics, illustration, interior design, architecture and everything in between. As I said, I will leave more info about the competition under this video and I'll see you guys in the next week.